Hello and welcome to the first edition of Makeup and Murder Mondays. So today's story that I'm going to tell you is about the disappearance of Alyssa Turney. If you live in Phoenix, you may have heard the news recently and heard about the case maybe for the first time in the past week, but I'm here to fill you in on some of the important details um, because this case is super old and a lot of people who are not from Arizona have probably not heard of it. So we're gonna go way back, way back to 2001, May of 2001, Alyssa Turney um, goes missing. So what happens is it's the last day of school. She uh, gets picked up early um, by her stepdad. Uh, her stepdad has legally adopted her because her mom was sick and um, her uh, biological dad had, I believe, signed over his rights to her. Um, so her mom uh, died and he was, so her stepfather became her actual only father figure or, or parent figure. So she lived with her sister, Sarah, who is one year or two years older, one or two years older. Um, and Alyssa and them, they all lived together. So on this day, the last day of school, 2001, it was May like 18th or something, um, Alyssa's, uh, Alyssa, Sarah is waiting for her dad to pick her up from school like he usually does on the last day and he doesn't show up. So Sarah's like, hmm, I wonder where he is. And you know, this is like not a real big cell phone time or anything like that. So I don't even know that these girls had cell phones. So they're, they, um, she wonders, well, her dad must have gotten busy with work whatever so she goes to a friend's house and she stays there until about 5 or 6 p.m that night and then she comes home and um she's like where's Alyssa?" and her dad says oh i thought she was coming home with you and um so they go into a room and they find a note and the note says let me see let me see if i have the note right up Dad and Sarah, when you dropped me off at school today, I decided I was going to California. Sarah, you said you really wanted me gone. Now you have it. Dad, I took $300 from you. That's why I saved my money. Now, we should know that she had a bank account that had $1,700 in it that she had gotten from work, some from other, from other things. So why she needed to steal the $300 cash we don't know, but initially nobody really thinks it's a big deal. Her dad used to be in law enforcement, so he calls, um, we're gonna just call him her dad since we're not gonna talk about her biological father. So her stepdad, dad, calls uh, police, reports her as a runaway. Now, we all know that when you get reported as a runaway, it is a lot different than if you get reported as missing. So, um, because they have a note, because she has stolen some cash from her dad and she's specifically said she's going to California. It looks like she is actually a runaway and all this noise in the background is my cat being crazy. Um, so anyway, so she, uh, she is listed as a runaway so there's not a lot of intense searches or anything like that for her. Um, at the same time, the school has record that her dad picked her up early, like on a half day from school. Of course, he doesn't mention that to the police. And then when they start asking questions, then um, he he does come forthcoming and he does say that he did pick her up, but that she ran away after when he left the house. Now, interesting note too, is that even in this day and age, 2001, not a very, technology technology driven age you don't have a lot of like ring devices or cameras inside your house or whatever but Alyssa's dad uh, Michael he did he had surveillance everywhere in the house so he was really it big into surveillance he really thought it was he loved playing around with cameras and technology and so he had cameras all over the house however none of the cameras were working. 
when Alyssa decided to take off. It's weird. Um, now, Alyssa did have an aunt in, uh, in California and she didn't get along famously with her uh, sister or her dad. So it kind of made sense that she would be going to California to live with the aunt. But, you know, the aunt, uh, she never shows up in California and things quickly turn cold. So um, no charges or anything like that are brought up and they don't really do too much of a big search. At this point, um, Sarah really believes that her dad's telling the truth and that definitely um, her sister took off. She had kind of, they kind of had a rocky relationship. She loved her sister, but they did fight. And also um, her stepdad or her dad, Sarah, this is Sarah's actual dad, uh, biological dad. Um, he uh, did favor Sarah, you know, he treated Sarah better. Um, Sarah got more, um, more privileges and there were more rules and stuff for Alyssa. So a week after she disappears, um, there is, uh, Michael calls the police again and says he got a phone call from her, uh, that she was in California and that she'd heard people were worried and she didn't want anybody to be worried. So, um, funny thing though, uh, even though Michael Turney recorded all of his phone calls. This phone call didn't get recorded. Hmm. So, uh, he basically shows, shows law enforcement. She's, you know, she's okay. She's, uh, he doesn't tell them that he records all of his calls at this point. He's not that forthcoming. He just says, I got a phone call from her. She says she's fine. We don't need to worry about it and a story, right? So one important reason and one thing to really remember why uh, this case didn't get a lot of press was because this all happened in May of 2001. And just as news was starting to go get, you know, they were going, there were more flyers out there. People were looking for Alyssa. I mean, the whole family was looking for her. Um, and they were they were literally canvassing areas everybody every part of the family was doing it but then it was 2001 and then september 11th happened and everybody's uh you know focus kind of went elsewhere um and you know i mean it was a really scary time and everyone was banded together with that and less worried about this potentially just a girl who ran away, who was a little bit troubled and who, you know, is probably somewhere out in California uh, with her $1,800 that she had in the bank or $1,700, whatever it was, and the 300 that she stole uh, from her stepdad. So that was kind of an issue, kind of a, a, a reason why that case did not go on um, further. So then, it kind of just fizzled, but not the end of the story. No, no, no. In 2006, so that's several years after she disappeared, um, police get a lead from a man who lives in Florida. Now, he's a man who's serving prison time in Florida. And um, he is, he says that he knows that uh, where she, that he murdered her, that he found her, that he murdered her, and he ends up confessing. Well, you know, it turns out to be a hoax, but the timing is still there and it still is good. So a couple years later, 2008, it's been seven years since she's been missing. She hasn't contacted any of her family and friends. No one, not, not, a, not a single soul. She hasn't, um, she hasn't touched that money in her bank account. So she stole 300 bucks because she needed money to go to California, but she had a bank account that had 17 or eight, 17 or 1800 dollars in it, and she didn't take a bit, not one little cent. I mean, even if you're just eating at Taco Bell, don't you need like some money occasionally? Um, so she hasn't taken anything out of that. Um, and the aunt that she was supposed to be going out there to live with, um, 
she hasn't seen her. Um, so then, you know, people are worried, like, did something happen to her on her way out to California or what? So they find out that her social security number hasn't been used. She um, hasn't been pulled over. There's been no, like, nothing. I mean, it's like she just disappeared totally, totally, totally just disappeared. So <clears throat> police, you know, are learning that that day that she went missing, she did not just uh, leave school, but she left school with her dad which wasn't something that he had mentioned back then, but I told you about it, but he didn't mention it until 2008-ish. Uh, um, they found out. So, <clears throat> so his story was that he went to get her some lunch, took her out to lunch and took her back to school. Wait, took her back to the house where she got into, they got into a fight over some rules uh, that she didn't like, which it is true, he had a lot of rules for her, a lot more than he did for Sarah. And he had two grown um, boys. And, you know, Alyssa's rules were much stricter, couldn't go places with friends, couldn't do things. He was worried about her, you know, doing drugs. And um, he was worried that she was like with the wrong crowd, but he never really gave her an opportunity to prove that she wasn't going to be you know, this, this, uh, this wild child, because he never really gave her the room, the rope, the lead to go and do things to show, to prove that she could be, um, you know, a good person. So anyway, police also discovered that he was super litigious. He had, um, Michael Turney had sued tons of different entities for many different reasons. And he also had, he also loved to tape things. He loved to put tapes on, um, he loved to videotape things. He had a video camera he used a lot. He had cameras in the house. He also loved to um, tape conversations uh, because, you know, he figured he was gonna use them probably later in court for against people because that's, he's also super paranoid. Um, so, they find audio tapes, but they don't find anything from the day that he said when she called. Um, and so they do a probable search during to his house. So they're like, at this point, it's, it's seven years later, but we do know that you're lying to us about some things and that's not cool. So seven years later, they decide that they're going to do a search of his house. They get a search warrant and they come across 26 homemade pipe bombs. No big deal, right? Everybody has those. Uh, a 90 page manifesto um, claiming that Alyssa ran away and that he believed two men from his electrical union followed her and probably killed her somewhere in the California desert. Um, then he said that he was a whistleblower in the union and they, the men were kind of against him and he, he had lots of delusions um, of certain types of things that people were always out to get him. I mean, if you thought somebody killed your daughter, why wouldn't you come to the police and say that rather than let the police believe all these years that she's just a runaway? I mean, makes sense to me. So anyway, um, he avenged her death by killing two men who he says did it. Now, uh, police get all kinds of paperwork, aud audio tapes, videotapes, letters. Um, she had, Lalissa had written a bunch of letters claiming that her dad had molested her. And then there were some videotapes of her and another girl um, who was not ever, uh, her name was, you know, obviously wasn't ever disclosed, but of them um, like sleeping. And so, I mean, he did have some videotapes of teenage girls like sleeping in just nightwear, kind of creepy. Um, so they found all these things and um, friends, her boyfriend, and even a former teacher all said, yes, they had heard these allegations. Now, as a teacher, you're a mandated reporter. Why didn't you tell anybody? That's one thing I have a problem with. 
Um, so also, Michael Turney ended up pleading guilty for the the charges of the, t uh, I think the charges were, let me just double check. Um, the charges were because he had the bombs and the 90 page manifesto. So it was considered that he was probably a terroristic threat. So he pleaded guilty, served 10 years in prison um, for the 26 pipe bombs. Um, he was also declared to have paranoid delusions um, and required to participate in mental health treatment. Now, he still lived here in, um, still lives here in Scottsdale, actually. Um, and last week, uh, there was a press conference and they arrested him. And they said that they have enough cause, although they were very, very clear to not discuss their evidence, which I just want to hear the evidence because I'm wondering if her body was found. Many people have said that she disappeared when Desert Ridge was being um, was being built and that it's possible that she uh, is buried somewhere underneath one of the fantabulous stores, maybe Target, over there in the Desert Ridge area. I don't know. I love that Desert Ridge area. I would hate to think that, that her body is under there, but hopefully they've either found a body or found evidence of a body because a nobody murder is really hard to, um, to try and to do so well. But they do say that they do have enough evidence to, they did have enough evidence to charge him with her murder. So he was arrested on August 21st for the charges were, let's see, second degree murder. Now, also important to note, throughout this uh, journey in this case, um, at the very beginning, Sarah and her brothers all supported the dad and believed that he had nothing to do with it. He, they, they firmly believed that he was completely uh, telling the truth was was totally not not guilty of anything, and they all felt like he was getting a bad rap, and so um, they all supported him. Well, then he went on to do um, a Dateline interview, and something during the Dateline interview clicked with the um, sister Sarah. And all of a sudden she realized that her dad did do this and that something he said on that interview, just, it just opened her eyes to see that, yes, he actually did do this. And so she started a whole social media campaign, um, including a podcast, uh, including, um, she's got a blog, she's got, and, and recently she's got a TikTok where she would give evidence and tips and then also um, phone number to call in case you had any information about her sister. So many are saying that since that happened at almost 20 years ago, that we are getting to the bottom of it now because Sarah had the courage to stand up to the man who murdered her, allegedly murdered her sister and to say, you know, something is not right here. These things don't add up. And if anybody has any sort of, you know, leads or evidence or anything, I, I, I need it. And so many are saying her social media account is really, really what is bringing this all to the forefront. And so, um, I mean, kudos to her for really hanging in there and uh, doing what she thought was right and for not giving up. I mean, you know, uh, that was 20 years ago. So Sarah, I mean, uh, Alyssa would be 37. She would have a family probably, a, a job. Um, she you know, could be married and have kids. And instead all of that was ruined. Uh, and then he say, it's because 
the um, because Alyssa had threatened to tell people what her dad had been doing. And um, I believe I'd even heard on a different podcast, one that I haven't heard in a while, that um, there was even some question about what had happened to Alyssa's mom, whether it was like a natural death or not, uh, that I do believe she had cancer. But I th still think there was some um, concern and some people were looking into that. Of course, I think it was just family members. So, but uh, anyway, it's a really interesting case. I, I really hope that uh, there's justice for Alyssa and that they have some solid evidence. And um, since they did charge him with murder, I'm hoping that they're able to uh, bring home the body um, and find her body. Uh, wherever it may be and that the family can have some peace finally um, about this so that is the first story for makeup and murder Mondays um, if you have any ideas for future stories let me know if you like this uh, let me know if you don't like it I guess keep it to yourself just kidding um, you know, if you have tips on how I can improve this uh, little venture that I'm going out on, let me know. Um, and every week on Mondays, there will be a new story to uh, get you into the true crime, um, true crime and makeup little video. So until next Monday, I hope that you stay beautiful and safe. Bye.